Hey, internet friends, I'm Ben, and I've got an update for you on the PyKiln project. For those of you who are new, I'm designing and building PyKiln, which is an open source, web-based kiln controller written in MicroPython that runs on an ESP32. I aim to make this the best kiln controller out there uh, by leveraging IoT devices, serverless systems, and modern web frameworks. Now that we got that out of the way, today we're going to be putting together the first PyKiln PCB and testing it out. To help with assembly, I use the interactive BOM plugin for KiCad. It's super cool and really handy for keeping track of where to place each part. I finished assembling the board and then got to work testing it out. Before we dig into all the mistakes I made, let's do a quick walkthrough of the board. I tried to make everything modular so you can easily swap out components if something were to break. The ESP32 I'm using is the dev kit board you can get off of Amazon. It plugs right into a socket. I've got a reset button uh, so you can update the Wi-Fi name and password without having to touch any code. Uh, here is a headphone jack that you can plug a non-invasive current sensor into. There's an ethernet jack that connects to another PCB that breaks out connections for the contactor and relays. Uh, using an ethernet cable makes it a breeze to wire everything up. And you can buy ethernet cables at whatever length you want. It's got a built-in MAX31856 temperature sensor with a screw terminal for a thermocouple. The MAX31856 chips are expensive, so I added headers so you can plug additional modules into it if your kill needs more accurate readings. Uh, I matched the same pinout as the Adafruit modules, uh, so if you prefer to buy modules from Adafruit, you can. I've got a piezoelectric speaker that plays fun little tunes when your kiln starts and finishes firing. It got a little bit melted when I was making changes to the board. Uh, it's not pretty, but it still works. And last but not least, a status LED. I'm using pin 2 uh, on the ESP32, which is also the built-in LED pin. So you don't have to wire up the external LED if you don't want to. Now that you've had a run through of the board, let's take a look at some teachable moments. As I predicted, I made a number of mistakes. I forgot to finish a trace on the current sensor. Uh, I somehow used 10 pin header for the MAX31856 modules when I only need nine pins. Uh, one of the pins I used for the relays uh, was on by default when the ESP32 would reset, which is a safety hazard. And I forgot I needed five volts uh, to power the mechanical relay that controls the coil on the contactor. Uh, so I ended up cutting some traces and running some wires in order to reroute pins and get this iteration of the board working. I also had to add some transistors um, to convert the 3.3 volt signal to five volts for the mechanical relay. Uh, I wrote a small program that tests all the inputs and outputs, and I can finally say they're all working. I've learned a lot from this PCB. In addition to correcting the mistakes I made, I'll be making some cable management improvements. I'm going to rotate the current sensor headphone jack and the built-in temperature sensor screw terminal 90 degrees. That way the wires all come out from the bottom of the circuit board in the same direction. I also plan on swapping this tiny screw terminal, which is used for connecting to the status LED, to be the same size screw terminal as the temperature sensor. Not a huge deal, but it simplifies the bill of materials. I'm also thinking about increasing the size of the screw terminals on the relay breakout board. Not everyone has a set of micro screwdrivers and I've got the room for it. All that said, now that the hardware is working, I'm gonna focus back on the software side for a little while before ordering the next iteration of PCBs. I'm sure I'll discover something else that could be improved if you guys think of anything that can make PyCoin better or safer, let me know about it. I'd love to hear from you. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up so YouTube shares it with more people. And if you like what I'm working on, click that little subscribe button below and hit the bell so you'll be notified when a new video is ready for your eyeballs. We've had a few starts and stops and changes in direction, but I'm really liking where this project is going. I appreciate all your feedback and I know we can make PyKiln the best kiln controller out there. 
And with that, I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.